Sean is in the house. Hey everybody, how's it going? Dr. Sean here. Tonight's topic is complicated grief. And you may be joining from the Project Forgive page, you may be joining from the Joy page, Positive Compassion, or even our Dr. Sean page. However you got here, even through our group, Joy is a Habit, I'm happy you're here. I just want to preface at the very end of this lecture, usually 20 to 30 minutes, I give away a prize when I do a lecture. And so I'm giving away a really good prize. And I'm just going to tell you to shuttle on over to Project Forgive because the only way you can win the prize in the moment and be in the United States is to be on the Project Forgive page, okay? Because I can't see the comments on the other pages. I can see them here on Project Forgive. I hope that makes sense. Just a reminder, I come on every Monday with joy as a habit is the mantra. Tonight I'm coming on special because last night was Halloween for us here in the United States. And um, I knew a lot of us grandmas and moms and all that would be trick-or-treating and I was trick-or-treating with my grandkids. And uh, so that's why it moved to tonight. Tonight. I show up every Monday on the conversation of joy as a habit and the last Monday of each month I do some kind of lecture and tonight it's about grief. It's complicated grief. Notes. I am going to give some notes today because I do got some good material. I will put those notes up in the comments, you know, at the top of the page once I'm done with the lecture. And, um, and here's the thing. Some of us come from dysfunctional family systems, okay, and or even abusive homes. So this is not about parent bashing. It's not. It's about being an accountable, responsible adult in your own emotional intelligence and your own healing. I see you guys are showing up wonderful. And this is no way am I giving medical advice. I am not permitted to give you medical advice. There are no diagnoses here. It's merely to raise awareness and to normalize some of your experiences that some of you might be going through and or someone that you love. And it's also to give you food for thought to investigate yourself. Because I just recently learned about complicated grief. I didn't even know it existed. And it's an actual diagnosis in the um, statistical manual for mental health. I'm gonna touch on it a little bit. Remember, I'm not giving you any medical advice. Raising awareness, okay? Because I've gone through this. Now, exacerbates, I've been reading this book. It's probably gonna show up backwards to you guys. I'm glad my mom died. Oh my goodness. If you come from a family system that was dysfunctional, read this book. It is so good. You, you'll be able to relate, if not in extremes, you'll just like, oh my gosh, it'll validate your experience. This is a perfect example of complicated grief. Now to juxtapose it, I just finished the book From Scratch. Have you heard of From Scratch? It's on Netflix right now and Zoe from Guardians of the Galaxy is in it. She's just delicious. And my son actually worked on the Netflix film, so I was very invested in watching it. He's a second AD and assistant director. And he told me, Mom, this book, this movie, this book is magical. It's so healing. And it actually uncomplicates grief, and it's pure grief from my estimation. So we've got complicated grief from I'm glad my mom died, and from scratch that probably has some elements of complicated grief and it's more of a healing experience. So if you're doing some grieving and you just need to read something or watch something that'll help the tears shed, because I find for me, if I watch something or read something, it helps release some of that real pent up emotion that's like almost stuck on me when it, when it comes to grief. So I recommend both of those, okay? All right, so lots of grieving. And different people follow different paths through the grieving experience. The order and timing of the things I'm about to share are gonna vary from person to person. So, part of grief is accepting the reality of your loss. It's allowing yourself to experience the pain of your loss. It's adjusting to a new reality in which the person that you lost, maybe it's you lost someone, is no longer present, and then even going on to having other relationships. I come from the context of I lost my mother, my, my father, and my sister very quickly, all together, right in succession from three types of cancer just before COVID, and I'm still grieving. Um, I'm pretty clear that I'm in complicated grief. And these, these differences that you experience when you're grieving are all normal. 
the thing is, if you're unable to move through some of these stages that I'm about to talk about, a year or even two years or three years after a death of a loved one, you may have complicated grief. Now remember, I am in no ways giving you diagnoses, I'm giving you food for thought, okay? And if you have complicated grief, my biggest suggestion is to seek treatment, get a therapist, post up programs, do whatever you gotta do, because it can help you to come to terms with those losses and reclaim a sense of acceptance and peace. Okay, now, Embracing and understanding complicated grief, I've come to, to a deep compassion for myself with this process because it's different than normal grief, whatever normal is. Okay, just dance with me with this. So I did a little bit of research so I can come up with some medical terms and some resources like the Mayo Clinic and things like that. What's the difference between normal grief and complicated grief? Normal grief describes the, the feelings that people have in the first weeks or months after a loss. That loss can be a pet. That loss can be a spouse or a partner. It can be a family member. It can be a deep betrayal. So it's not limited to losing someone to death, okay? I just wanted to really say that. And this type of grief, normal grief, you know, we're playing with normal, gets better with time as people learn, as we learn to cope with our losses, right? Complicated grief, however, on the flip side, describes atypical feelings and responses that can be extremely intense and persistent. For me, I was caregiving my mother as she was dying, my sister had already died, my father had already died, and right now I'm watching my friend going through the loss of her mother. And it's re-emphasizing all that agony in that complicated grief. Okay, so this is gonna sound really extreme, and I'm saying it to normalize it. I, uh, I had a, a very difficult moment, and um, I hate to use the word abusive, but that really is the right term. And I also loved her dearly, right? And um, I had moments when she was going through her death process that I wanted to just take a pillow and just end it. I just like, I can't take this anymore. As my one friend says right now with her mother, and she is a very painful mother, she wants to get off the merry-go-round. This can also be true if you're a caregiver and you love the person. You could be so tired and exhausted, you're like, I just need this to end, I can't take this anymore. And even the ending doesn't feel good either because you know how much pain you're gonna be in with the ending. So it's complicated, right? That's complicated. And it's dichotomies. Like, I love my mother, I hate my mother. I'm glad my mom died, I didn't want my mom to die. So it's allowing the complexities of being so human, because we're all so human. You know, one great example is on Friday, I was with my granddaughter, she's six, and she said out loud that she doesn't like her teacher, Mrs. Reed. And her babysitter said, wait a minute, Brielle, you just told me the other day that you loved your teacher. And of course, grandma steps in to validate because when we're not validated as kids, we have a really hard time validating our experiences when we're older. And I chime in and I says, oh, that makes perfect sense to me. Some days you love your teacher, some days you don't love her at all. Some days you love Kate, the babysitter, some days you don't love Kate at all. Some days you adore your mother, some days you're really mad at her and you don't like her at all. That is validation that I can do for a six-year-old that we can do for ourselves, me as a 58-year-old grandma, it's up to me to validate myself. And that's probably the real reason why I wanted to do this complicated grief, so you don't have to feel alone or those that you love that might be going through some of this, and that you can validate, because all these feelings are so experienced by so many, right? right? Can you validate your own feelings? And one of the things that's cool with my friend going through what I went through two years ago with my mom is I know everything to say because it's, I'm saying everything to her that I wish someone could have said to me. Oh, it makes sense that you feel blah, blah, blah. I get it. It's so complicated. It's so complex. It's a myriad of feelings. And to just be able to validate that for yourself or someone you love is pure exquisiteness. I see you guys popping up. If you have thoughts as you're going, please feel free to do that. So I found some risk case um, factors. We're on complicated grief tonight. That's what the lecture is about. I found some risk factors from the Mayo Clinic, and I just want to run through them real quick. 
and like I just mentioned, I will copy and paste these and put them in the live so you can access them so you don't have to take notes or anything, okay? I'll do that for you. Okay, complicated grief occurs often in females, and I thought, oh, that's perfect, um, and with older age, whatever older age means for me, that's 45 and older. So females 45 and older experience complicated grief. And there's factors that can increase your risk of developing complicated grief. And those include an un unexpected or violent death of someone, um, such as a car accident, a murder, or a suicide of a loved one. It can be the death of a child. That would be devastating, devastating. Um, having a close or dependent relationship to the deceased person if you're deeply close. Maybe social isolation or loss of a support system or friendships with that loss. If you have a past history of dealing with depression, separation anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, having childhood, traumatic childhood experiences such as abuse or neglect. And I always really like to em emphasize neglect because tangible abuse is easier to face. Neglect is hard to grab. And when I'm reading I'm Glad My Mom Died, a lot of her, the experiences that she went through were very tangible. Neglect is not so tangible and harder to grasp and heal from, right? And complications. Complicated grief can affect you physically, mentally, socially, and without some kind of treatment therapy, complications can include increased depression, suicidal thoughts or behaviors, anxiety, including PTSD, sleep disturbances. That's one of mine. I really struggle sleeping. Sometimes I'm even scared to go to bed because I'm scared I'm not going to get sleep because I'm swirling and churning, right? Yep, I'm with you, Sue Helen. I gotcha. I hope I said your name right. Increased risk of physical illness, such as heart disease, cancer, or blood pressure, and even long-term difficulty with daily living, relationships, or even work activities. Um, what also happens, too, with complicated grief is an increase in alcohol, an increase in nicotine, or substance abuse, or even overeating or not eating. Now, of course, going to the Mayo Clinic, they're going to give me some prevention stuff, so I'm, I want to mention the prevention stuff. It's not really even clear how to prevent complicated grief because it's new in its diagnostic tool as a tool. Um, getting counseling soon after a loss may help, especially for those of us who are at increased risk of developing complicated grief. Caregivers providing end-of-life care for a loved one may also benefit from, the, from counseling and support to help prepare for death and its emotional aftermath because it is an emotional aftermath, right? I see you guys. Let's see if there's anything I need to address as you're coming in. We're on complicated grief tonight. I see you guys. I see you, Sally, Diana. Let's see if there's any comments that I need to address. Uh, Angela, I'm so sorry. Sorry for the loss of your mama. Very sorry. It's hard. So hard. So in terms of prevention, there's a lot of emotional aftermath. They have three things on here that talk that they talk about from the Mayo Clinic. Talking, talking about your grief and allowing yourself to cry. And if you can't access crying, that's why I recommend grief movies, grief books, because it helps release like barnacles on a boat. You know, if a boat has been stiff and stuck, it actually accumulates barnacles. And watching a movie or reading a book can help release some of the tears that seem to be bottled up, right? Support family members, friends, social support, your faith community. They're all good options to help you move through grief. 12-step programs. I'm a big 12-step program fan, um, big fan of therapy. Um, and you can even ask your doctor to recommend some local resources, right? There's also such a thing as bereavement counseling. And um, I did a bunch of that. I, through my hospitals, I signed up on Facebook. Sometimes I was just like, oh, it was so annoying listening to people because I was just so annoyed with my own grief. But I did it. I did a lot of Zoom calls around grief bereavement with people helping with healthy coping skills. That's where you learn to like do the beatbox breathing, like breathe in for four seconds, hold it for six seconds, breathe out for seven. That's something that I do pretty consistently when I'm attempting to go to sleep because I have some 
discomfort or anxiety about trying to sleep because loss of sleep is one of the symptoms of complicated grief, right? Um, some other, th other thoughts about complicated grief, right? That's the gist of it. I wanted to give you some thoughts, my own thoughts about complicated grief. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that, Angela. It's so good. Yeah, I, and I so get the same. It's, oh, oh my goodness, it's so good. Especially losing a parent, a spouse, a partner. Ooh. One of the, the references, or one of the themes in the From Scratch book slash show that I just previously mentioned is um, the author, her name is Tembi Locke. Just a delicious human. I just loved everything about her. I loved everything she shared. I was mesmerized reading that book as well as being mesmerized reading this one, that Mamande. And she had a conversation. I'm not going to say it as eloquently as she did. She talked about when you're grieving. She lost her husband. You learn very early on when you read the book from scratch and watch the movie that she loses her husband to cancer. And um, she talks about when you're facing grief, like the loss of a spouse, all your other pains and grief shows up too. And it invigorates and um, amplifies all kinds of feelings and loss that are not complete for you. And I thought, that is just freaking brilliant, because that's exactly what happened to me. Um, the, another thing that creates complicated grief, or part of complicated grief for me, is watching your children make mistakes. They might be similar to your own, because we do generational patterns. We do do generational patterns. Every woman in my family got divorced. Watched it over and over and over again. Watching my daughter go through a divorce, eight months pregnant. All my grief was invigorated and amplified with my first marriage. I'm in my second marriage. I've been married 27 years. I still have some stuff that's not done with that ex-husband. You know, and I thought I did a lot of work on that. You with me? So grief can invigorate and amplify other grievings that you have, other pieces of grief that you haven't completed. And I really see grief as not something to check off the checkbox and say, oh, I'm done with that. I just see it as a lifelong process. Um, I, that's just my personal opinion. And it gets easier. I'm going to trust it's going to get easier. I can honestly say it's easier now today for me with my mom, my dad, and my sister dying so quickly together. It's not perfect by any stretch, and I'm not completely through it. No way, Jose. And it is easier. Yeah. The other thing that can amplify grief is, are the ages of your children and your grandchildren. So maybe you thought you dealt with blah, 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 and then you've got a six-year-old granddaughter like I do, and you start remembering some things from when you were six years old that were really painful that you hadn't quite completed or forgiven or accepted with your own parents. So it's this ongoing journey. And I find that when I'm accepting that that's how it's going to go sometimes, I just have a lot more peace about it. A lot less judgment to myself. A lot more compassion for myself, right? So here's the deal. The biggest thing about this complicated grief, do some research, ask your doctor, see if this fits for you or a family member that you so deeply want to support. And be kind to yourself. Offer yourself so much compassion. Validate yourself. And share the really deep stuff with people you deeply feel safe with. Like, it's not like today, I feel more comfortable sharing here on Facebook Live, but I had moments I really wanted my mom to die and I wanted to put a pillow on her face. That was real. At the time, I wasn't sharing that with very many people. Okay, it was too raw, it was too real. I was in so much pain. And so we have to hold our hearts so preciously about who we're going to share stuff with so it doesn't ricochet back at us that they're really, 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 really safe to share with. Yeah. Yep. Sandra, you are spot on. You are so spot on with that anger. I have some days I am still so angry, and then other days I'm smelling my mother's shampoo in the bathroom because I miss her. It's such a roller coaster ride. You're spot on, Sandra. Thank you for sharing that. I love that. Okay, so that's the gist of complicated grief tonight. 
next month, I come up, I show up every Monday, 6.30. I'm going to work really hard for next Monday because I am going to Disneyland in California with grandkids next Monday. And I will put it in my thing to remind me. Yep. You got it, Joan. That's right. Some people are not safe to share with because our vulnerability is the most precious, sacred parts of us. We want to pick safe people to share with. Yeah. So see you next Monday. I'm going to give away a prize here in just a second. Um, at the end of November, it's the last Monday at 6.30 p.m., the, the topic is going to be triggers, boundaries, and anger. Oh, my. Triggers, boundaries, and anger. Oh, my. I've been learning a lot about boundaries lately for myself and, dis and discerning, is it a boundary or is it control? Is it a boundary or am I just trying to control this or trying to fix this? And I'm getting some understanding around that for myself. So I really want to talk about triggers, boundaries, and anger. Okay, so that will be at the end of November. Um, someone's about to win a prize. And it's a special prize. It's for my husband's company. My husband makes keto-friendly and diabetic-friendly desserts. They are freaking delicious. You would never know they're diabetic. You would never know that they're keto. And I'm gonna, someone's about to win. I'm gonna tell you what it is. A chocolate mousse and a pumpkin spice mousse. I'll ship it to you here in the US. You must be in the US to win. And um, I'm about to say how you're going to win the prize. And um, that's one of the reasons that um, I give away prizes. I really want people to know about my husband's dessert at desserts and his company. And um, this prize, I will ask for your email and for your address, the email so you can track the shipping. And the email so that, of course, I can get you the tracking for the shipping. And this prize will ship out on Monday. Typically, I... Whenever you win a prize, I send it out the next day. We don't want to risk with ice and everything going that it has to sit over the weekend, so it will be shipped out on Monday. And whoever wins, I will keep you in the loop so you know when the shipping's happening, okay? So here's how you win. You can only win on the Project Forgive page. And how you win is you are going to put a heart in the comments. Not a heart for the Facebook Live, a heart in the comments, and I'm going to count them off. And my lucky number, and my favorite number, seems to be 11 these days. So I'm going to watch from my phone the 11th heart. I'm going to count them out. Whoever has that 11th heart is going to get this shipped to them. You must be in the U.S. You must be the 11th heart. You can start putting hearts in the comments. It only pertains to my feed. Clara, you're number one. And you can do it as many times as you want. I don't care. You can win as many times as you want. Katie Ann, you're number two. Katie Ann, number three. Joan, you're number four. Joan is number four. We're trying to get to number 11. Angela's number five. Thank you for the star, Sandra. Katie Ann is number six. We're at number six. We're going to 11. Angela's number seven. Joan is number eight. We're at number eight. Three more to go. Sandra's number nine. Claire's number ten. The next heart is it. Linda Flores, it's you. It's you, Linda. Oh, Zuhaylin, thanks for playing. I hope I'm saying your name right. So, Linda Flores, you're the winner tonight. You can message me here on Facebook. You can email me, Dr. Sean at projectforgive.com. On the message on Facebook, it's very safe. It's just me and Hailey in my office that ever look at those messages. We would never sell your email, any of that. That would never happen in a cabillion years. So, Linda, I need your email and your address, and this will be shipped out on Monday, okay? I'm so happy you won this because the moose is absolutely exquisite, okay? So, big love, everybody. I will see you next Monday from Disneyland. Do enjoy as I have it, just saying hey. As soon as I hang up, I'm going to put all this information into the, the top part of this Facebook Live so you have access to it. And um, just remember, be so gentle to yourself. I love that you guys are congratulating Linda. And um, I love that you play, and I love that you show up. And um, I just deeply appreciate you. You're so welcome, Cindy. Big love, everybody. Talk to you soon.